it's Kat with Eterna Shine. Today we're going to check out some great products for keeping your guitars looking their best. Whether it's a routine polishing or a complete finish restore, Eterna Shine products are the only polish you need. Visit our website, guitarscratchmover.com, and get yours today. Hi, this is Keith. Welcome to part two. Hopefully you follow me over here from part one where I covered really important stuff, so I hope you don't miss that. And there's important steps that people sometimes miss or do out of order. So anyway, check that out and then join me back here at part two, which is coming right up. Thanks. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna mark off how much I wanna shave this down on the grinding wheel. Some people use a belt sander. I'm thinking that I want the action at the 12th fret to be at least one millimeter lower than it is now when the guitar is tuned up. And so this is about half the distance, okay? The 12th fret is about half the distance from here to the other end of the guitar. And so if I wanted to drop one millimeter here, I actually need to double that amount here. So I'm going to try to take down two millimeters. There's a number of ways you can mark this. Just any straight edge, a clear, this is a clear straight edge, and what's nice about this one is you can actually see what you're doing, right? You can see through so you don't do too much. So what I like to do is I start by making the two millimeter a tick mark on each end, and I've done enough of these that I kind of know where two mil is, and then do one on the other side. And if you find that the action is lower or higher on one end of your guitar than the other, the high E string versus the low E string, by all means, make the adjustment however you want it. You know, if you want it a little higher on the, on the heavy strings. So once I've got my mark drawn there, now I just need to connect it. This is an important step because you don't want to just walk over to the grinding wheel and not have this thing marked because you can take off way too much material. So even if I decide not to take off the whole two millimeters, any, any reduction here is going to be a good thing because the guitar is just going to play better. So there's various methods for cutting down the saddle. I've tried just about every method. There's the grinding wheel method. I can't really recommend this one though because this is the most dangerous method. So if you want to use a grinding wheel, I would hire a professional just to be safe. There's sanding blocks that people use, rubbing the saddle across the sanding block. You can also do this with sandpaper strips, double sticky tape, stick them to your workbench and then rub the saddle across the sandpaper. Other people use power sanders, those work good. Good idea there is maybe secure the saddle in a vise and then machine off what you have to cut off with the uh, electric sander. And then um, the last option is some people use belt sanders. And the main thing is take all safety precautions, be careful not to get injured, and um, if in doubt, hire a professional. And by all means, um, it's not a problem to finish with sandpaper so that you don't overdo it with the, with the tools. You can do most of it with the tools and then finish with sandpaper and so that you get a nice square result on the bottom of your saddle. So we're done with the revisions and it's looking good. It's ready to go back in. Um, if you are new at this and this is your first time, it's not a bad idea to have some spare saddles in case you accidentally grind one down too much. The other alternative is if you grind too much off, you can get shims. They're these little thin strips of uh, either wood or celluloid that can make up for a saddle that's been cut too short. And if you don't do it right, then to redo it. So, but this one's right. And so let's slide this guy back in. You see it goes in real easy. And I didn't even need a pliers for this. There are times when you do need a pliers. And once again, remember, coat your uh, plier tips with, with tape or something soft so you don't mess up your guitar. So that went in real easy. And now all I have to do is tighten the strings back up and test this guy out. So let's do that. All right, so she's tuned up to pitch again. 
and I just checked the action at the 12th fret once again and it's amazing. It's at two and a half millimeters, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Three millimeters would have been fine. Um, it was at four. Uh, guys, with guitar action, millimeters is everything, right? Like they say, inches is everything in baseball and sports. With guitars, uh, millimeters is everything. And a reduction of one millimeter in action is considered a lot. It's just a hair over two and a half. Uh, I'm sorry, the existing action is a hair over two and a half at the 12th fret. So I actually lowered it almost a millimeter and a half. And it plays amazing. So <clears throat> after you do that, you're going to check to make sure that you've got no buzzing, right? So... And I'm not going to go through every, every note because I already played it. And it's fantastic. <clears throat> it's just fantastic. So it plays so much, so much easier. Anyway, you can hear that it's still drifting a little out of tune. Um, anytime you take tension off the strings and then put it back, nylon strings are very temperamental and it can take a little while to come back to stabilize, basically. This was a great success. It's really uh, the best thing you can do for a guitar that has, uh, is not playing right or has high action. There's just one final tip I want to leave you guys with, and that is make sure when you buy a guitar that the saddle and the bridge have enough room to lower the action because there are rare cases on acoustic and classical guitars uh, where the guitar has terribly high action all over the neck, and then you look down at the saddle and the bridge and there's no room to work with. The saddle's already either been lowered or it's too low to begin with, and you can't lower the action. In a situation like that, the only thing you can do is cut into the rosewood bridge um, and I've had to do this before and it's not the greatest position to be in because there's resale implications for the guitar and if a guitar has high action and there's no room to lower it something's wrong with the guitar or how it was made so it's just something to keep an eye on when you're buying and then coming up here is an angle of the guitar we just worked on there you can see that's a pretty good angle right there so you can see there's plenty of uh saddle left there's a look at the, the 12th fret again kind of hard to tell from a camera but you can take my word that it is uh about two and a half millimeters at the 12th fret and that is pretty ideal so anyway guys thanks for watching and uh Post any questions below, please like and subscribe if you don't mind, and hope, uh, hope we helped you out. Take care.